why is Biden running? That's really the question that we all want to know. But a Wall Street Journal columnist writes, I have yet to hear Mr. Axelrod or any other prominent Democrat of the Obama, Clinton or Biden circle suggest Mr. Biden is doing America a favor by running. He goes on to write, quote, starting to crystallize in the press is the off the record question heard from senior Democrats over the past year. If Mr. Trump is such a danger to America, democracy and apple pie, shouldn't Mr. Biden be heeding voters, stepping aside and opening the door to a new generation of Democrats? Well, that is the question that we are all asking. Who, what, why they have Joe Biden <laughs> going to win South Carolina, I'm sure. But one thing I want to ask you about, Molly, because I know that you follow this all very closely. We're all wondering why Biden, but he does have a stranglehold on this nomination, at least now. But I wonder, though, South Carolina, he's banking on the black voters coming out for him, supporting him. Maybe not in this so much, but in a general election. But we have a clip. MSNBC is kind of startled to discover that maybe those black voters might be moving away from Joe. Let's take a listen to that, and then I want to get your reaction. There are some people in your orbit who are either voting for Donald Trump or considering it? For sure. A lot of my friends are obviously my age, so we're a little younger. <laughs> We've only voted once, you know, for actually for a president. And Trump is kind of all we know. And they're kind of Trump and Biden. They're like, well, we were broke with Biden. We weren't with Trump. And that's kind of the only thing that I'm hearing over and over again, over and over yeah. again, is that, well, Trump, we had money. I love that slogan, <laughs> broke with Biden, uh, maybe a little bit more realistic than Bidenomics. But do you think that the black voters in South Carolina, do you think that they're still going to be supporting Biden? Or is that what we heard? Is that an anomaly or is that going to be a pattern? Well, it'll be interesting to break down the black vote into different subsets as well, because overwhelmingly they will continue to vote Democrat. That is uh, something that black voters have done for many decades. But you actually need like a complete 100 percent vote if you're the Democrat Party and you're getting word from a lot of people um, that they might not be voting for him. It's something we're experiencing here that we haven't had since like Grover Cleveland, where you can actually <laughs> compare two presidencies side by side. You can say, what was life like under the Trump administration and what was life like under the Biden administration? And there are lots of issues that people care about, whether it's the border, foreign policy, crime. But there is that saying that Bill Clinton used to say, you know, that it's the economy, stupid. And economically speaking, people really remember that it wasn't that long ago that things were much better than they are now. And that is going to be a challenge for the Democrats. And I just want to say, that's why they might be risking things by not having a Democratic primary for real. Like, they, they claim they're having a Democrat primary, but it's not really open to other people. They've done a really good job of shutting down anything, even though people are saying they don't want to vote for Joe Biden. And that might come back to, uh, to bite them later. That's what I find so interesting, Griff, is that nobody wants Biden, but yet they're kind of stuck with Biden, at least for now. I've been maintaining it for over a year now. I don't think Joe Biden is going to be the Democrat nominee. I don't think it's going to be Dean Phillips or Marianne Williamson. I don't think it's going to be RFK. But I think come convention time, there's going to be a major shakeup. I'm still putting my money on Gavin Newsom. But at least for now, it looks like they're sticking with Joe. He's in L.A. He's raising more money. He's raised a lot of money. Where is that money going to go if Joe's not the You nominee? better knock this kind of talk off. <laughs> Otherwise, President Biden's going to send corn pop after you. Yes. This kind of talk, <laughs> it's not what he wants. And look, you know, I think what's really fascinating, and that clip you played was very fascinating, too, the, the young people, younger voters, 30 and under, have no connection whatsoever. They're completely unable in any way to relate to this guy. And now you've got Joe Biden upsetting these young voters uh, who are supposed to come in droves. They're the, the climate activists. And of course, he's all in on the green uh, agenda. But yet he's upsetting them with Gaza. He's upsetting them with the financial realities of their life. And now the core group of the black vote, particularly where it turned around for him in South Carolina, what's going to be fascinating tonight and then Molly knows this better than anybody, I think, watching these elections, is actually, even though he's taken it for a given, he's out in L.A. and, you know, the Palmetto State that saved him the mm -hmm. first time, it's going to be interesting to see how he how the turnout comes because he had about 250,000 or plus turnout and he got about 48% to 50% last time. If he underperforms that, you're going to have party leaders saying, you know what? We may really need to look at an option like Tommy Lahren's talking about because this was a gimme. You got to get the gimme big. Well, 
people aren't really voting for Joe. They're just voting against Trump. And I think that that's the entire notion of the Biden campaign and the Democrat plan. But, you know, Van Jones, he's not the only one, but there have been several that say, listen, Biden is, is losing young voters. He's, you know, trying to woo them through TikTok influencers. But this pro-Palestinian segment of Democrat voters, both young and in places like Michigan, these Arab voters. We've got Van Jones saying, probably not good that they're referring to him as Genocide Joe. Let's take a listen to Van. It's a big problem for him right now. Uh, there are four syllables that are aimed at him. Uh, Genocide Joe. Uh, that is becoming something that you're hearing from the younger people, from the younger voters, from the Arab American community. You've got to be honest. Right now, you've got disappointment. Uh, in the base with how he's handling uh, the war in Gaza. So, I mean, you know, these are the voters that Democrats have gotten into bed with. So, uh, you know, listening to them complain about the fact that uh, Democrats are now talking about genocide, Joe, I, I don't have a whole lot of patience for it. But uh, you're also seeing um, a, a great example of why Democrats are so desperate to keep Joe Biden in the basement. The clip that Mark Meredith played for us uh, where Joe Biden said that Donald Trump is not for anything. He's only against things. It's like, yeah, he's against like all, you know, n unnecessary wars, right. which Joe Biden has given us two more of. Um, and he's not for anything. Well, actually, he is for things. He's for things like a border, uh, you know, lower gas prices, a better economy. And I think it's so funny when the media and Democrats are so shocked to, to wake up and discover that black voters don't want crime in their neighborhoods. Black voters want, like, a good economy. And Hispanic voters don't want an open border. They want a good economy. They want uh, law and order. And they're, like, so amazed by this. But, um, but this is what, the, you know, the, and I, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not up on Grover Cleveland, but, which is why I'm so <laughs> glad that uh, you're, you're a friend of mine because you, can, uh, you are always uh, can help me out, out with these things. But you don't have to look very far back to realize that, it's these policies, and whether it's the border or the economy, every single one of these things that has made people's lives more miserable um, over the course of just four years can be traced directly to policies that this administration has enacted. But, Charlie, here's what I worry about, and I want to ask you about this, Molly, because... Democrats, they don't have popular policy positions. They don't have a popular candidate in Joe Biden, but they're raising a lot of money. And they have the mechanics of electioneering down. Exactly. That's what I'm worried about. I'm The way that they're operating with this Biden campaign tells me that they're really confident in early voting, mail-in voting. They're really confident in their strategy. They don't really care about the policies or the nominee because they've got the system down. How true do you think that is and how worried should Republicans be? They should take it extremely seriously. Uh, Democrats have done a good job of changing from having campaigns where you have good candidates and you have a persuasive message. They understand that elections are won now by how many ballots you get into ballot boxes. That's what they're doing. That's why Joe Biden is meeting with donors, because it takes so much money to do it. So Republicans would be wise to follow that. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else. Je 
souffler, c'est celle nec de poussité, non qui a ou dormi souffle. Ou pose ou pomme, tout ça monte là, moins pas trop fri. Tout ça me décompte payer une relation ou pomme yo fri. Y'a nec qui compte tout je t'aime. Ou de ne maille ou le patem, mais on pas tout je t'aime comme yo t'aime. Et puis c'est pour ça je t'aime. Tout le monde c'est des figui, I love you. Figui je t'aime. Est-ce que c'est pour te même ou bien tout c'est pour ta vie t'aime?